super fun stuff. Welcome to another video of super fun stuff. In today's video, I will go through a small tutorial slash experiment I did using the comic book style painting method and a glaze contrast method. If you haven't seen my comic book style painting tutorial, please go check it out. Let's start off with what do I mean by comic book style and a glaze contrast. Comic book style has a large focus on strong lines and block colors. We can confer that style onto our minis by understanding how to paint specific blocks of highlight color and outline our minis using black ink. We also add other marks and shapes using the ink to show details or shadows or really anything you want. So what about glaze contrast method? Recently, GW came out with a new paint called Contrast Paint. The goal of this paint was to use it on a white model, and the colors will give a good gradual color into the recesses. It's similar to a wash, but thicker and gives you a better highlight. From what I've seen and read, some of these contrast paints do a fairly good job at giving off simple highlights. Others seem splotchy and gross looking. However, this method is nothing new, and even though they are charging a fortune for these paints, this method basically uses a glazing medium with pigments. The idea was that the pigments and heavier particles would sit in the recesses and details more, and less on other places. So if you paint your mini white, it would give you an effect similar to highlighting. So using a glazing medium, I decided to try it out with a few colors and see how it works with this comic book style that I use. Let's first pick out a mini. Today I picked a custom magus that I made for my Gene Stealer Cult army. I primed him white and he's ready to go. The color that I really like from the contrast paints that GW made has been the reds. I figure to see if I can make my own that does a similar thing. I take a dark burgundy color and mix it with a glazing medium. It's a simple 50-50 split. For this, I didn't use pigments, but I did use a heavily pigmented paint. I then start to apply it all over the mini I want red. Here comes the first thing I didn't really like about this method. For this to work, you have to apply this fairly heavy. You need a thicker coat so the pigments and sides can move easier and fall into the details. But when you paint heavy, you make more mistakes and it takes a lot longer to dry. Also, red is not a color you want to make too many mistakes with, especially when you paint skin that is way lighter. I proceed to go around the model and paint my red glaze. With the glaze all done and dried, you can see how the highlights really do pop. Now if you have seen my videos before, you know I don't like highlighting red with white but this actually turned out pretty nice. Not a huge fan of the splotchiness on certain areas, but I can clearly see where the highlights are. Now I try the same thing, but using a flush tone. Then I do a skull color. Then I proceed to paint the rest of the model, which is mostly metallics. The metallic contrast paint I saw looked pretty pathetic, so I just stick to the standard method for that. So far, the skin in the red outfit glaze contrast method is turning out pretty good. Right away I knew I didn't like the color of the skulls, so I added a good flesh wash on top of that to get it the correct skull color. And then I applied a black wash and a red wash for the silver and the gold. Just to finish up the model, add some purple wash to the rubble on the base. I found the glaze contrast method did a very good job at the highlights, but for the comic book style it just wasn't enough. So for the red I added a fire engine red, orange, and a little white. And for the skin I added a little more flesh wash, a brighter skin tone, and a white. The back of the head was a purple wash and I added a red wash around the scar on the front of the head. One thing I did really like with the glaze contrast method is that it showed me where my highlights could go. Instead of me trying to figure out where I wanted to apply things, I knew exactly where the top ridges of details would be and where I should put my highlights. For the base, I dry brush grays and add some black washes shaded areas to give it more depth. I do want to mention one thing I didn't record. The glaze medium that I used wasn't matte. It had a shine to it, and it didn't look right. I hated it. So I went over the whole model with a matte clear coat or anti-shine, and that took it all away. So if you try this at home and you get a shine, there's a very simple solution. The only thing I do warn you is with the anti-shine stuff is that you should do it before you do the inking. If you do it after the inking, it can sometimes remove some of that hard work you just put in. 
I'm guessing it's slightly abrasive or the chemical in it, but it is enough to take off the ink. So now for the fun part, it's time for inking. For this model, I decided to go over the whole model one time just to do the outlines of all the details. I then go over it a second time to add my own marks. It's up to you how you want to do the inking. I think this is a pretty simple way, and I figured just to change it up from time to time. It may take a while to do the inking, but it really creates the comic book feel. I also add some ink to the base just to accent the shallower regions. And there you go. He looks really great. And now you can see that the slightly different method gave similar results. This Magus fits right in with his fellow cult. For comparison, here is the Magus model that I had, painted the normal way versus the custom Magus in the comic book style. I'll leave it up to you which one you like better, but I know which one I pick. And my custom Magus is complete. We took a similar approach to the standard comic book style painting method, but added in some glaze contrasting. Now let's go over with some of my thoughts regarding this method. First, the pros. Using this glazing medium over an already mixed contrast paint is so much cheaper. So if you already like the contrast paints, try this out. You get similar results for a fraction of price. Next, it really worked at showing highlights. It worked well, especially with the red. It let me figure out where to apply the block highlights easier. This was the biggest benefit from this glaze contrast method. It took the thinking out of the highlight. Next, it got me similar results to the other comic book style minis I had painted. And lastly, it saves a little time. Mostly this is because of how it shows me the highlights easier and takes the thinking out. Now with the cons, you have to apply this very thick. You have to be really careful with the other details and not to make a mess. It also takes a bit of time to dry. It wasn't super terrible, but you had to wait a good five minutes. Sometimes it can come out a little blotchy. You can see this mostly on the red, how it creates a weird little spot. Luckily, it was supposed to be for fabric anyway, so it kind of worked. Also, it's not an end-all solution. You still need to do your highlights and apply washes as needed. And lastly, it came out glossy, but this was very easily fixed. So would I use this again? My answer would be yes. I think the best thing the glaze contrast method gave me was accenting my highlights for me. So when I go to add my block highlights, it was really easy. It would be fun to trap the GW contrast paints to this glazing medium, but at the prices they are charging for those paints, I'll easily stick with this method in my glazing medium. I had a lot of fun trying this out with this style, and I hope you guys can try it out yourselves too. Thanks for watching.